Original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaito Vucha. Dharma Pujita Kaito Vucha. Paramo Nimatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nimatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulana. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kriti. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kriti. Kimba Purir Ishwaraha. Kimba Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra. Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra. Priti Bihi Susu Subhish Takshana. Priti Bihi Susu Subhish Takshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are purely fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This is beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of that scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama Kalpatarur Galitam Falam. Nikama Kalpatarur Galitam Falam. Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Sukumakad Amrita. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhagavakaha. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhagavakaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shi Sugadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shi Sugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Prisu Bhadrisu Nasta Parishra Bhadrisu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki In this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way a devotee naturally develops his transcendental dormant knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus ma material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha sijayate. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. Bidite Hridaya Grantis. Chidyante Sarvasam Saya. Chidyante Sarvasam Saya. Evat Manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, verse number 25. Daranyuvacha, Daranyuvacha, Bhavan hi veda tat sarvam, Bhavan hi veda tat sarvam, Yanman dharmanu prichasi, Yanman dharmanu prichasi, Chatur bhivarta se yena, Padai Loka Sukhan Van Hai. Padai Loka Sukhan Translation. The earthly deity, in the form of a cow, thus replied to the personality of religious principles in the form of a bull. O Dharma, whatever you have inquired from me shall be known to you. I shall try to reply to all those questions. Once you too were maintained by your four legs and you increased happiness over the universe by the mercy of the Lord. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The principles of religion are laid down by the Lord Himself and the executor of such Lord, laws is Dharma Raja or Yama Raja. Such principles work fully in the age of Satya Yuga. In the Treta Yuga, they are reduced by a fraction of one fourth. In the Dwapara Yuga, they are reduced to one half. 
and in the Kali Yuga, they are reduced to one-fourth, gradually diminishing to the zero point. And then devastation takes place. Happiness in the world depends proportionately on the maintenance of the religious principles, individually or collectively. The best part of valor is to maintain the principles despite all kinds of odds. Thus, one can be happy during the span of life and ultimately return to Godhead. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So the main point here is maintaining the principles of Krishna consciousness individually and collectively, despite all kinds of odds. That's the point. Thus, one can be happy during the span of life and ultimately return to Godhead. So how do we maintain these principles despite all kinds of odds? Well, it requires faith. Uh, any endeavor requires faith. Without faith, one would not act. And faith is a very fundamental thing in Krishna consciousness. First of all, faith always precedes knowledge. That is, one will not begin an activity unless they have some kind of faith that they will succeed. Uh, so this faith that one has a chance of success always precedes the endeavor. And later, one gets the knowledge that the endeavor was either a success or failure. So uh, what do we put our faith in? That's the whole point. So the material scientists, they put their faith in matter. They think matter is the source of everything. And that's a wrong concept. Uh, Krishna says, Aham sarva si prabhavo matak sarva pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava saman vita. He says that I am the source of everything material and spiritual. Those persons who know this engage in my devotional service. So the devotee always puts their faith in Krishna. And in spiritual, let's say, truth. The materialist always puts his faith in matter, and he thinks that the starting point of everything is matter. But Krishna clearly says that the starting point of everything is himself. So who do we believe? That's the question. Uh, we should definitely believe Krishna. Why? Because the greatest personalities in history believe Krishna. So therefore, that means that we should also believe Krishna. So this is explained also. Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Chirasaram Itananina Konteya Jagat Viparivartate. Ninth chapter, tenth verse, Krishna says, This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O Sana Kunti producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So here again, we have proof from Krishna's statements that he is the controller of the material nature, that, that uh, he is, and the material nature is only one of his energies. And, uh, and it's working under his direction. So, Again, who do we believe? The scientists say there's no God and everything is coming from matter. In fact, there was an article yesterday in the news that one scientist has uh, discovered a way to make a machine conscious like a human being. So it's, we're not just talking about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is not consciousness. But he's talking about consciousness like a human being. And in the article it says that traditionally people thought that consciousness is something spiritual. It's coming from 
the soul. But now this scientist is saying, no, uh, the, uh, the way to produce consciousness in a machine is through electromagnetism. And, and, and he says, there's, and this is what the brain does. The brain puts out an electromagnetic field that somehow bypasses uh, simply uh, uh, communication through very tiny fibers in the brain and, and creates uh, a electronic electromagnetic field where at any point one can perceive things uh, and and he says that uh, this is a new way to uh, basically create consciousness in a machine <laughs> so again he does not uh, accept uh, that there's God or there's a soul. Uh, and, and his main point is that uh, we can use this electromagnetism to create a field of consciousness uh, in a machine, just like, and he's claiming that the mind, the brain, does the same thing. That they're not only little fibers transferring information from the brain to the senses, et cetera, and backward, and, and back and forth, but there's an electromagnetic field that's generated by the, by the brain. Well, uh, this is, again, a, a, uh, a dead-end street. So Prabhupada says, the scientist's mistake is that they are ignorant of the two energies, mat material and spiritual. They say that everything is material and that everything emanates from matter. The defect in their theories is that they begin from matter instead of spirit. Since matter comes from spirit, in a sense, everything is spiritual. Spiritual energy is the source and can exist without the material energy. But the material energy has no existence without the spiritual energy. It is correct to say that darkness comes, begins from light, not that light begins from darkness. Scientists think that consciousness comes from matter. Actually, consciousness always exists, but when it is covered or degraded by ignorance, it is a form of unconsciousness. So material means forgetfulness of Krishna, and spiritual means full consciousness of Krishna. Is this clear? Try to understand. Darkness comes from light. When no light is visible, then we are in darkness. Clouds are not to be found in the sun. That would be against the nature of the sun. But the energy of the sun, <clears throat> by, but by the energy of the sun, <clears throat> other things are temporarily created, such as mist, clouds, or darkness. These creations are temporary, but the sun remains. Similarly, material nature is temporary, but spiritual nature is permanent. Krishna consciousness means getting out of this temporary nature and attaining a permanent spiritual nature. No one actually wants this temporary nature. No one likes this cloudy atmosphere. So this is a brilliant explanation by Prabhupada. That is uh, by giving the example of the sun. There are no clouds on the sun. However, the sun can create clouds and mists, and by covering uh, itself, it creates darkness. So darkness is a function of light, but light is not a function of darkness. So the soul is eternal, and from the soul, matter comes. In what way? It, actually, everything is spiritual. But when darkness appears, or ignorance, and people think that there's no God and there's simply uh, matter, then uh, the, the, that darkness or ignorance covers the uh, eternal spiritual nature and uh, temporarily. It can't cover it for, forever. 
and, and thus people suffer unnecessarily in that ignorance or darkness. So, uh, Prabhupada continues that everything is coming from Krishna. So, Krishna is the creator of everything. When, and that includes good things and bad things. But actually, there are no bad things from Krishna's point of view. We only perceive things as good and bad. Like, for example, Krishna married 16,000 wives. So someone would say, oh, this is not proper. You know, That means he's a lusty guy. But if you don't understand the history of how he got 16,000 wives, you would end up with false assumptions like that. And Krishna, by the way, expanded himself 16,000 times to be with every wife individually and to do different things with each wife in, and he, he also created uh, palaces for each one. So, and those ladies were all kidnapped by this demon, Bomasura, or Narakasura, and he, he was defeated by Krishna. But due to the Vedic culture, those women could not go back to their families because they had been kept by the demon and, uh, and defiled. So therefore, they could never get married. So therefore, but Krishna saved them. So the women said, Krishna, you have to marry us. And he said, well, how can I marry 16,000 wives? They said, well, you're the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You can do anything. So you have to marry each one of us because we can't, we can't go back to our families and we can't get married. So he married them all and built palaces for each one. And he had 10 sons with each one. That was the Yadu dynasty. Okay, so here we cannot understand Krishna because uh, we do not have the same power that Krishna do does. He has absolute power. And we have just relative power. And, and everything that we see is actually the energy of Krishna, both material and spiritual. And from his point of view, there's nothing bad. Everything is good. Because by his uh, incredible energy, he, he can transform matter into spirit or spirit into matter. And both things uh, belong to him. So as long as we don't have that vision, what vision? To see that everything is the energy of Krishna, including ourselves. So everything belongs to Krishna and everything is qualitatively one with Krishna and quantitatively different. Beside all that, Krishna is never affected by the modes of material nature as we have a tendency to be. So as long as we're affected by the modes of material nature, we cannot understand Krishna. But once we free ourselves by acting in Krishna consciousness, then we begin to understand the transcendental nature of the Lord, his infinite and variegated energies, his ability to be very far away and very near, uh, to, to his ability to marry 16,000 wives. He can marry 16 million wives if he wants to. Why only 16,000? So, uh, unless we carefully hear the Vedic literature uh, from bona fide devotees, we develop all these false concepts. And ultimately, uh, and Krishna tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, Yomam Pasyati Sarvatva, Pasyam Chalamai Pasyati, Sarvam Chalamai Pasyati, Tasyaham Na Pranasyami, Sachame Na Pranasyati. He says, For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. So, how do we see uh, Krishna everywhere? Well, it's all his energy. Everything material and spiritual is his energy. Bhumirapu nalo vayu kam mano budire vacha ankara itiyame bina pakti rastata 
Aparyam itastvanyam pakriti vidime param jiva bhuta mahabha ho yayadam dayate jagat. So earth, water, fire, air, mind, uh, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego, these are all Krishna's uh, inferior uh, spiritual energies. And But besides this, there are all the living entities. They're, they are his marginal energy. They're, they're part of the spiritual energy, but they're in a the marginal position. And then the whole, uh, so that means the whole material world and all living entities, they're part and parcel of Krishna. They're, they're his energies. And whatever you look at, it's made up of this material and spiritual energy. So therefore, uh, Krishna is present everywhere as the super soul. Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Chacharataram. Hitanani Nakuntea Jagat Viparivartate. He's present everywhere in the material creation and in the spiritual world. And at the same time, he is independent of everything and not affected by anything. So he has this absolute neutrality and, uh, and absolute equality. He has, he has this uh, identity and individuality. He is, he is at once uh, everything, and yet he still has his individuality. So this is all explained in Bhagavad Gita. And if we understand this, then we're not bewildered. But if we don't understand this, then we easily become bewildered by uh, birth, old age, disease, and death, and then uh, repetition of that horrible uh, sequence. And so therefore, if we learn to see Krishna in everything, just like if there's a computer, there's a little label on it that says Intel inside. That, that's, that's what makes the thing work. Those, those are the, the computer chips that makes them, the, and, and it's the property of Intel. Well, in the same way, Whenever we see something, we should we should think Krishna inside. Right, he is he's what makes things work. Right, this, the planets revolving on their in their uh, orbits in a perfect way for millions and millions of years, and uh, changing of the seasons and all these different things are happening in a perfect way throughout the universe. It's all because of Krishna's omnipresence as Paramatma. And he's also present in our body, and, and our body is working too. You know, we're digesting food, we're making blood, we're, our body is like a chemical factory. It makes wax, it makes tears, it makes blood, it makes plasma, and so forth. So we see that all these amazing things are happening, and we're normally oblivious to it. We, we don't realize how wonderful this whole manifestation is and we just take it for granted. And then we believe nonsense things like what the scientists are telling us, which is not rational at all. It's not scientific. It's actually fairy, fairy tales. Okay, they can make machines, so what? Uh, the body is a machine, but it functions much better than any machine they've ever made. So uh, their machines are gross machines, and Krishna's machines are transcendental, subtle machines. So we have to compare things. And when you compare things, just like you compare a Yugo to a Mercedes. A Yugo is one of the worst cars that's ever been made, made by the Yugoslavians. That is, they call it the Yugo, right? And uh, Mercedes is one of the most perfect cars that has ever been made. So by comparing things, you begin to understand this, this is not so good, this is very good. So everything Krishna has created is super excellent. Like for example, an artist can create a flower, right? The image of the flower, but it has none of the real qualities of the flower, right? doesn't have taste, smell, uh, but it, it, it sort of reflects the colors, 
some of the colors of a flower. But now, that the imitation flower that the artist makes on the canvas, is, let's compare it to the real flower. You see, so there's no comparison. The real flower is full of life, beauty, it's uh, fragrant, etc. And the imitation flower is a two-dimensional, uh, very, let's say, mediocre representation of the real thing. So we should be concerned with the real flower and not with the imitation flower. Just like the Japanese, uh, the, the Chinese are making these imitation plastic flowers, right? But it doesn't function like a flower. It just looks a little bit similar to one. So this is the, uh, the point that's being made here, that uh, Prabhupada says the best part of valor is to maintain the principles despite all kinds of odds. So what are these principles? Uh, the principles are uh, the uh, regulative principles of Krishna consciousness and especially chanting Hare Krishna. If we can maintain these things, then we are following the path of Krishna consciousness and this is what's holding society together. Now there's different levels of following Krishna consciousness. You have uh, Christianity, you have Judaism, you have Islam, other things. They try and follow some principles. Uh, but because they follow in a partial way, uh, the full happiness and bliss is not being re realized. Uh, so somebody has to follow integrally. And therefore, Krishna, Prabhupada came to the United States and he spread Krishna consciousness and he's given us all these books and his tapes so that we can strictly follow Krishna consciousness. And thus, one can be happy during the span of life and ultimately return to Godhead. So, therefore, he said, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Now, if you ask someone, what do you want in life? They'll say, oh, I want to be happy. Right? I don't want to be sad, I don't want tragedy, I want to be happy. Okay, so here's the easy way to be happy and a direct way to be happy. Chant Hare Krishna, follow the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. They said, no, I won't do that. That's not my religion, that's your religion, blah, blah, blah. So this is the problem that even if the opportunity is given to someone, to solve the problems of life, birth, death, old age, and disease in an easy, straightforward way, they don't believe it. That's because of too much sinful activity, too much addict addiction to sense gratification, and too much darkness in their life. So we want to turn the lights on. We don't want to turn the lights off. And the way to keep the light burning, just like there's the, the uh, the uh, concept of the eternal flame, right? Somebody has kept a flame burning uh, for a hundred years or a thousand years, right? So that eternal flame is Krishna consciousness and it'll keep you in the light. Uh, just like it says, tamasima jyotirgama, go from the darkness to the light. Well, how do you do that? You take up Krishna consciousness and you'll always be in the light of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Are there any questions?